I want to introduce our first reader, and that's how the order is going to go, is whomever is speaking will introduce the next reader. Um, you told me to do this from the right, right-hand side, right? Is this? I don't never know if I'm doing it right. Oh, good, I'm doing it right. Okay, Brandon Dale is our first reader. Brandon is always stirring things up. I think we remember that from last year, his stir. But almost always in a good way. Both inside and outside the classroom, he is a torrent of fearless spirit, boundless inquiry, and much needed perspective. It's my privilege to introduce a unique southern voice, as charming as it is troublesome, Mr. Brandon Dale. Thank you. <clears throat> I would like to thank everybody for coming here today. Thank you. And I would also like to thank my papa. This is called Closed on Sunday. This is chapter one. At 8, 12 in the morning, Jim woke up in his truck with his 22 Ruger pistol on his lap and chunks of dried vomit on his cracked lips. He tasted sour bile and spat onto the steering wheel in a spray. God damn it, he said, and quickly looked up. I apologize, Lord, but how did I end up here? It's where he needed to be, but holy hell. Three empty bottles of Scheinerbach and two blue and gold packs of Camish, Camel Turkish Royals lay scattered on the cloth passenger seat. Lord, my life is shit. Did she really have to go to Shreveport? Really? Out of all places? His head dropped and he whispered, why couldn't it have been mine? Jim wanted to scream and shoot off the 22 round while he slammed his truck into the BP in a mess of fire. Instead, he blamed his best friend. Damn it, Calvin. Why didn't he tell me earlier? I spent a whole year with that bitch held on his tongue. Then all he imagined was her soft touch and that lavender smelling hair. He quickly reminded himself that she was the one who dumped him. The wooden rectangular open sign taunted Jim from the front door of the BP gas station across the gravel road. The sign was painted in navy blue, the trim white, and the letters red. It hung on a chain from the metal bar across the thick glass door. The bright letters O-P-E-N shined through the fog like they was plugged in. Jim, Jim hadn't seen that sign in a week. Oh, excuse me, I have to show my, show my pig. <laughs> His godfather Buck sent him down to Orange Beach, Alabama to do some sad work investigating the cleanup crews of the oil spill, and part of that extended to taking down the open sign. The BP had become like a second home, one Jim didn't want, but it was what he had. It was a small white building built of old recycled bricks from an abandoned bank that had been vacant since the Depression. Each brick was worn and aged a rustic red, and even the thick layer of white paint couldn't hide the scars in the shallow craters. It had a silver tin roof, which is layered with leaves and a few branches that blew in in a storm. The fixed light on the side, a bare bulb, brightly showered white light above the bathroom. Several stacks of black milk crates, up to the waist high, lined the corner of the BP. Behind them, not 15 yards back, an old rotten wooden shed looked like it was slowly imploding while the RC cola machine that sat adjacent rusted from a royal blue to a dirty red. Back on further, an empty overgrown field with a few young pine trees popping up spread out all the way to the tree line. 
and the smell of magnolias blooming swirled in the low-hanging clouds that were stuck below the water oaks like the spring humidity. Clouds so low, they kissed the weeds and thorns that nodded up the field. Jim felt the weight of the pistol in his hand. He quickly lifted it and drew it to his right eye. Looking down the dark barrel, his stomach sank. A goddamn year! Jim's eyes shot up. Sorry, Lord, I, I'm alone. I'm my best friend. The cold metal sights on the gun's barrel brushed against the distinct table-like bridge of his nose. He deeply breathed into his chest and took in the musty, stale stench of the cloth seats. Jim stuck his hand down in between his seat and the console, down with the forgotten styrofoam lack french fries and small dried mud clods. Skinny fingers, pink and spotted on the inside, fished out a pack of cigarettes. The pack had nothing in it but crunched up silver and gold foil. Jim wiped the vomit from his face and started the truck. The thick rectangular iPod scratch screen lit up. His flip phone vibrated in his jeans with three buzzes. The truck's not that bad speakers played the Who's Acid Queen. <clears throat> if your child ain't all he should be now. Jim used the pistol like a drumstick and mimicked Keith Moon's intro drum fill. This girl can put him right. I'll show him what he could be now. Jim sang, I am the gypsy, the acid queen. Pay before we start. The gypsy, I'm guaranteed to tear your soul apart. Up. More, 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 more. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> the drum fill rattled the speakers, but Jim sat still and whispered, Jess. He closed his eyes and remembered her yellow dress, looking into her eyes for the first time and hear an acid queen from a truck's radio with its windows down. It was at that stupid party a year back when Jim drove down a gravel road past porch lit trailers to a wooden shotgun house with peeling green paint. Jim compared the place to a hunting camp to the new owner, a friend of Calvin's, who then referred to it as his home. In the backyard, Three of his friends from Natchez alternated between sips of Natty Light and drags off cigarettes. They stood in the back behind a mud hole, a fire pit, and a white wooden door on top of two patio chairs, the beer pong table. Loud truck speakers sang, I am the gypsy, the acid queen, pay before we start. From the back of the house, Jess nudged the screen door open and stepped onto the small porch like a bale. Her blonde curls swung by her thin green eyes and a swaying yellow dress bounced around her hips below to her thighs. She faced Jim with a tiny, almost hovering smile and slipped along down the steps, skipped over the mud hole and faded into the party. Jim stepped after her blindly, slipping into the sludge with his foot going forward, his other leg braced, and he was on the verge of a split. He loosened his knees and fell back onto his leg, lifting the other out of the mud and tumbling onto his back. When he sat upright, Jess stood giggling an adjacent mud hole with her arms pressed on her hips. Smooth. First time around mud, she said. <laughs> You saw that? I'm sure everyone did. He shook her soft silk fingers, and she smiled a pretty row of teeth with one small tooth on the bottom sticking up and out. I'm Jess. I'm Jim. Is that your full name? 
what do you want? My my whole name is Jim Lanou Belleville the third. The third, huh? She raised her thin eyebrows. Where are you from? Matches. But I just moved up with my godfather outside of St. Francisville. Run away from home? Jim felt his face drop pale white. Uh, nah. My godfather's going to put me to work. Him and his old friend of his own a BP down there. Well, I suggest you get your GED. <laughs> Jim's cheeks flushed red. Is that right? You'll need it if you ever plan on going to college. Don't you plan on going to college? A Natchez boy like you? Jim's smile flattened. I'll plan on it one day. Well, good for you. Where are you thinking about going? LSU. Ha! Yeah, right. And follow the generations of men that went there before me? So, you're from one of those families, huh? You sure there's not another reason you left home? I got out when I could. <clears throat> Mom was a drunk that stopped drinking and switched to prescription meds. You sure you got that GED? He reassured her that he graduated from a fine Catholic school called Cathedral, but he didn't give her the real reason why he left home. <clears throat> they kept on talking a while longer until Buzz, Buck buzzed him, asking where he ran off to. Before he drove back to St. Francisville, him and Jess ended the night with a kiss. At least, that's how his night ended. Due to the recent confession from Calvin, Jim now knew how Jess did in that net. <clears throat> Just as the gypsy queen must do, you're gonna hit the road. Jim knew there was no such thing as first love, but that didn't stop nothing. He opened his eyes to the fog daylight, scowled, and lifted the pistol back to his right eye. He stared down the long barrel. He clicked the safety from on to off. I don't deserve this laugh. I've been given more than I could have asked for, e even when it was taken away. Buck was there. I, 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 can't, I can't burden him like this anymore, Lord. Please bless him. His finger wrapped around the Ruger's trigger on the verge of that, twat, that tight squeeze followed by the instant recoil and the expected feeling of relief. Jim stared forward and let a breath through his vomit-stained lips. The pistol's cold barrel wavered. He thought about driving out west, the cowboys, and never returning to Mississippi. A smile emerged on his face. His pocket shook while his phone beeped like a defective clock radio. He wrestled a flip phone from his jeans with his free hand and read the words, wake up, on the small exterior screen. Damn it, Buck, you might be the only one out here who cares about me. His flip phone pulsed and vibrated violently. Jim jumped, his skin crawled, his hand clenched, his fingers tightened, the trigger clicked, and the pistol popped. Thank you.